Mahaba, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Doc Is In. My name is Prudence Marshall, and I'll be your host for today's episode, brought to you in collaboration from our oncology and heart and vascular and thoracic institutes for the Fatima Bin Mubarak Centre here at Cleveland Clinic, Abu Dhabi. Here with me for today's episode is Dr. Andreas Obeso. Dr. Obeso is a thoracic surgeon with specialised fellowship training. Currently, he serves as a staff surgeon specialising in thoracic surgery for our Heart, Vascular and Thoracic Institute. With extensive international experience, Dr. Obeso has performed over 3,000 surgeries, specialising in minimally invasive techniques, such as both robotic and video-assisted thoracic surgery. Dr. Obeso has contributed to numerous international journals throughout his medical career and holds leadership roles in global medical societies. His current focus is on advancing surgical innovation, particularly in minimally invasive approaches for managing lung cancer. Welcome, Dr. Obeso, to The Doc Is In. It is an absolute pleasure pleasure to have you here with us today. I'm really looking forward to you sharing with me in the community about lung cancer and the context of that within a thoracic surgeon. So before we get into discussing the specifics with our audience um, for the podcast, can you share with me what is a thoracic surgeon? Thank you so much, uh, Prudence. First of all, thank you. Uh, I really appreciate this kind invitation to participate in this new chapter of uh, Doggy Sing. Okay, so today we're going to uh, discuss about a very interesting topic for us, uh, lung cancer. Okay, so let me start with the first question. So it's a very interesting question. What is a thoracic surgeon, right? So a thoracic surgeon uh, is a physician who uh, surgically treats uh, all the uh, disease in the chest, okay, except the heart. Uh, that usually these uh, uh, problems are managed by the cardiac uh, surgeon. So I can say that the 60-70% of our uh, daily activity is to manage uh, to treat patients with lung cancer, okay? But uh, also we, uh, we uh, do a lot of surgeries uh, uh, for other diseases, like for instance, uh, pleural disease, like pneumothorax, like pleural effusion. We treat also uh, young patients with chest wall deformities, most of them patients with pectus cavatum or pectus carinatum. Uh, it's very frequent here in this country, patients with uh, hyperhidrosis, which means the excessive sweating, uh, usually in the arms or in the armpits. So for these patients, we can uh, do a simple surgery, it's called uh, sympathectomy, which uh, we uh, stop completely the sweating just immediately after the surgery. So it's very rewarding for the uh, for the uh, for the patients. Uh, we treat uh, problems in the trachea, in the esophagus. I mean, it's a very uh, huge uh, field. But as I told you, I mean, most of our activities to treat patients with lung. Uh, cancer. Fantastic. Thank you for that explanation. It's wonderful for our patients to have that context. What is the most frequent pulmonary resections that you would see done in the context of lung cancer within your role? Okay. So the first that I have to say, uh, Prudence, is that the lung cancer is the leading cause of uh, cancer-related deaths in the world. So one out of five uh, cancer-related deaths are because of lung cancer. And even uh, we know that uh, the lung cancer kill more patients than breast, uh, colorectal, and prostate together. Okay, so uh, the lung cancer has a huge importance uh, uh, for our uh, for our patients. Uh, so when we receive a patient with a pulmonary nodule with a suspicion of confirmed lung cancer, uh, when they are in early stages, uh, the best treatment is to do a surgery. Okay. Also, it's very important to detect these uh, nodules in early stages because, unfortunately, uh, most of the patients with lung cancer are diagnosed in uh, advanced stages. Okay, that's why it's very important to, uh, like we have in this hospital, a, a lung cancer screening program. Okay, just to detect these uh, uh, tumors as soon as possible. Okay, because these are the patients who are uh, going to be more benefit from the surgery. Okay. Uh, so, um, usually when we are talking about the surgery in lung cancer patients, the most frequent surgery is uh, called a lobectomy, okay? Lobectomy just means to remove one of the lobes uh, of the lung. Uh, we know that uh, in the right side we have three lobes, in the left side we have two lobes. So, uh, the lobectomy is just to remove the entire lobe, okay? So, this is the most frequent surgery. In some specific patients, usually patients with small nodules, less than two centimeters, adenocarcinoma, uh, with a patient with a ground glass consistency in low nodules. So in these patients, even we can remove not only the, the entire lobe, uh, lobe also um, uh, just a specific segment of this lobe, okay? 
and even in other patients with a huge tumors, uh, uh, tumors, central tumors just close to the main bell cells or the main uh, bronchus, even in these patients sometimes we have to remove the entire uh, lung. It's called pneumonectomy, okay? But again, the most frequent is to do a, a, a lobectomy. Thank you so much, Dr. Besso. In your response there, I noticed that you mentioned some key benefits of actually having a robotic approach in thoracic surgery for lung cancer. Could you elaborate on those benefits for me? Sure. So as I said, I mean, the robotic procedure has a clear benefits for the patients uh, in terms of less pain, less postoperative uh, um, complications, shorter stay, so they can come back to the normal activity earlier. But also the robotic procedures are a clear benefit from the, uh, for the surgeons. OK, uh, so the first one is from the ergonomic point of view. We are sitting down in the console, which uh, uh, if we compare with the other procedures that we have to stand up for four or five hours, so in the, with the robotic procedure we can sit down and be more comfortable during this long period of, of time, okay? Uh, the second benefit is the, the view. The view with the robotic platform is much better because usually the view is in 3D dimension, okay? Uh, so the quality and high, high definition quality, so the quality of the view is much better, okay? Regarding the movements of the instruments, these are more precise, okay, because the uh, robot uh, can eliminate the tremor that we have when we are doing a, a, a surgery, okay, so the movements are very, very precise. So all these characteristics uh, at the end of the procedures makes our life much more easier. No, of course, and better for the patient, better for you. Exactly. It's wonderful to hear. We've discussed the surgical approaches for treating lung cancer. What would make a patient a candidate for surgery for lung cancer? And are there any factors that influence that decision? Okay, so this is a very, very important point. Okay, just so we are, uh, have to analyze several factors before uh, sending the patient to the to the operating room. Okay, so uh, when we uh, are, we are when we are doing the selection of the patients that could be potential candidates for the uh, for the surgery, we have to um, uh, check two things. Okay. The first thing is the resectability. So it means if this lung cancer is resectable, okay? Uh, to check this issue, we have to um, check very, very carefully the preoperative images, okay? Basically, the CT scan and also the PET scan. So in these radiological images, we can see the size of the tumor, we can see the shape of the tumor, we can see if the tumor is involving uh, important structures like the spine, like the uh, like the heart, like the, some important vessels, okay? So this is the, the first thing that we have to define is if we can resect the tumor, okay? Uh, and the second thing, which is also very, very important, is uh, we have to be sure that the patient can tolerate uh, this kind of surgery, this kind of pulmonary resection that we talked uh, before about, uh, about that, okay? Uh, so it makes no sense that we can remove completely the tumor, but we, the patient cannot tolerate this, uh, this, this surgery, okay? So uh, for that, we have to first, we have to evaluate very carefully the lung function, okay? Uh, so we have to send the patients to the pulmonology department to uh, do high spirometry and to also to check the uh, diffusion lung capacity, okay? Usually when these uh, values, with both values are normal, uh, we say normal when is more than 80%, uh, the patient uh, is ready for every single type of pulmonary resection, okay? Uh, if these values are a little bit uh, lower, so we have to do further investigations, also like a cardiopulmonary SSI test or a, a gammography, so several things, okay? Uh, but again, we have to be very, very, uh, we have to be very sure that the patient can tolerate this surgery from the respiratory point of view. And the second uh, uh, organ that we have to check is the heart, okay? because uh, it's very important uh, to identify any cardiac problems before the surgery. That's why all our patients need to be, uh, needs to be, um, uh, they, they need to do a ECG and also a echocardiography, okay? If we detect any problem in these two uh, tests, we always send the patient to the cardiologist just to uh, do a proper assessment of these uh, of this, uh, this issues, okay? Uh, and basically these two things, I mean, it's a little bit more complex than, uh, than that, but usually we have to uh, assess the cardiac function and the pulmonary function before the surgery. Thank you, Dr. Andres. The information you've shared so far has been so informative. I'd like to take a moment now to discuss the post-operative side of thoracic surgery for lung cancer. Can you walk us through that and what can a patient expect? 
Okay, thank you so much for that because also the postoperative course is also so important as the as the surgery, right? Uh, so most of our patients uh, after the surgery, when once we finish the, the surgery, they are completely uh, awake, extubating, breathing by themselves. So usually uh, when we finish the surgery, we send the patient to the PACU, to the postoperative room, okay? So they are there like uh, one, two hours. We repeat the x-ray. If the x-ray is good, the patient is sent directly to the, uh, to the floor, okay? Just uh, in some patients that we consider that the surgical uh, risk is very high, so this patient needs to be monitorized in the ICU for at least 24 hours, okay? But again, most of the patients after the surgery, just uh, they go to the PACU, from the PACU to the, uh, to the floor. So um, for us, it's very important to uh, follow the patient very closely, uh, specifically during the first uh, 24, 48 hours, okay? Just to rule out that there is no any complication and everything is going well, okay? Also, the second uh, most important thing is just to uh, control the pain, okay? Because even when we do a minimally invasive surgery, there is always some pain in the in the chest, okay? We have a very specific team, the pain management team, who is following the patient every single day, and they manage all the uh, all the uh, pain uh, uh, treatments, okay? Uh, also, after the surgery, the patient has a chest drain, okay? With this chest drain, we can monitorize uh, the chest, uh, the uh, the drain output, uh, if there is some bleeding, or if there is some air leak, or, but usually most of the patients, like 24 hours, 48 hours after the surgery, we remove this uh, this change, okay? So uh, the uh, postoperative complication rate, uh, I can say that is low, okay? So uh, I think that this is a safe surgery, uh, okay, for the for the patients. And if everything is uh, is okay, usually the patient can go home uh, like the, on, on the fourth or five or fifth uh, uh, postoperative day, okay? Also, it's normal during the first uh, month. Uh, I can uh, I tell all I, I told all my patients that during the first month after the surgery, it's completely normal to have some mild pain. Okay, but also when we discharge the patient, we prescribe some uh, painkillers. Okay, and also it's completely normal to feel a little bit tiredness, especially when they are doing some exercise like climbing uh, climbing stairs or like doing some physical uh, uh, efforts. So this al uh, is also normal to feel a little bit uh, uh, tired. But after one month, the patient can do a completely normal life, okay? Uh, breathing properly, uh, doing physical exercise. Uh, so it's, it's going to be a completely normal life. Thank you, doctor. One final question for you today. What advice do you have for patients and their families when they're considering surgery as a treatment option for their lung cancer? Our goal is just to explain uh, every single information uh, about what is happening, okay? Because sometimes the patients and the families are confused and they are not uh, have a clear information about uh, what's the problem, okay? So my goal is just to explain uh, exactly uh, every single um, uh, data about what's what's happening, okay? So we review the images, uh, we explained about uh, what's the problem and what are the uh, which are the solutions, okay, for this uh, for this for this problem. So we deal uh, with this information; they uh, can understand the um, the importance of the of the of this disease of the lung cancer, okay? As long as they have this information, they are more prepared uh, for the coming future okay for the for the surgery so we advise them to uh, have a good nutrition okay because we know that the patient that uh, and uh, under nutrition is uh, the probability of complication after the surgery is higher okay uh, the second thing is that we encourage them to do regular physical exercise before the surgery. So every day they have to go out, they have to walk just to prepare because uh, this preparation is going to be very important uh, after in the postoperative course. Okay. Uh, and the third point, also very, very important, is uh, uh, smoking cessation because uh, we know that nine out of 10 patients with lung cancer are current smokers or former smokers, okay? And we know that the patients that uh, are smoking until the day before the surgery, the probability of postoperative pneumonias uh, is uh, is higher than a patient that is not, uh, is not a smoker, okay? So that's why these three, nutrition, exercise, and uh, uh, smoking cessation are very important uh, to consider before the surgery. Thank you. I think it's been a very informative podcast and it's been wonderful to have you here with us today. So thanks again. And thank you to all of our listeners for joining us for this insightful episode of The Doc If It's In. If you found today's episode valuable with our oncology expert, thoracic surgeon, Dr. Andrea Sabesso, please feel free to share it with your community. And until next time, take care and stay informed with The Doc Is In at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm.